Welcome everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you so, so much for traveling from all ends of the earth to be here with us. Welcome also to those of you joining online. I'm delighted to say we have actually 90 in-person delegates and over the three days with the meeting for ICAPOM as well, we have 181 people participating in person and online. So, um, welcome to the party. <laughs> um, thanks um, <coughs> to uh, Professor Catherine O'Leary who will formally open our conference soon and um, I'll thank Jamie in a moment. Where we are today, the University of St Andrews was founded in 1413. It's the oldest university in Scotland, which probably most of you know. But it also hosts the oldest museum studies program in Scotland, which has been running for over 30 years. We're a close-knit community of scholars. We enjoy multidisciplinary working and collaborations for global challenges. And we really value our international networks, such as those offered by you. So thank you very much for being part of what we do. So this week we're looking forward to hearing your stories, your island stories, from your homes or the places where you work. And in return, we hope that you will enjoy some warm Scottish hospitality and making new friends and seeing old ones. This conference would have been possible without the support of a number of funders, and it falls to me to thank the UK Research and Innovation Fund, the School of Art History, ICAFOM, of course, and the ICOM SAREC Fund, the University Impact Fund, the Scotland Futures Fund, and the Centre of Contemporary Art, all of whom have contributed. So thank you so much. It's also, of course, involved a great deal of work behind the scenes. I'd like to thank the board of ICAFOM, especially Professor Elizabeth Weiser, who is here um, from Ohio, who oversaw in her capacity as chief editor the material for <coughs> discussion that was disseminated. So thank you for your endless patience, um, Liz. <laughs> I'd also like to thank our student team, <coughs> who you can see in the black t-shirts, who've been working very hard under the tutelage of uh, Jamie in getting this operating as smoothly as possible for all of you today. And of course, <clears throat> the biggest amount of gratitude does go to Jamie Brown, um, without whom none of this would have been possible. And thank you very much, Jamie. <laughs> for ensuring that together with your goodwill, this <coughs> next few days will be a great success. Thank you. Good morning everyone, thank you so much and I'd just like to follow on from Professor Karen Brown. I hope you're all having a fantastic start to the conference and enjoying the beautiful Scottish weather so far. <laughs> um, it's not always like this, so please enjoy the sunshine. <laughs> and following on from Professor Karen Brown's comments, who has just expressed our heartfelt gratitude to our funders but also to the collaboration and support across the globe for to make this a possibility. I would also like to take this moment to acknowledge the incredible support of our organising committee and a huge thank you firstly to Professor Karen Brown who leads our research projects and is chair of ICOFOM, Anna Saul Gonzalez who is part of our organising committee as well and Kirsty Elliott from the university's events team as well. And of course I would also just like to thank you everyone who's attending both in person and online Thank you for pushing up with my many emails of notifications and details of what's happening, so I appreciate that. Additionally, we are immensely grateful to our museum and heritage studies students, assistants and volunteers. Can I ask them to stand up and give a wave to everyone? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Before we continue today, I would like to take this opportunity to remind everyone to scan the QR code that's on your screens and, of course, located at the desks. This will give you access to all of the conference content, including schedules, speaker information, excursion information, venue maps, and allergy information for lunch. Printed copies of the delegate packs will be available from lunchtime today. And as we look ahead towards the rest of the day and the rest of the conference, please remember that a tour of St. Salvators will take place today at 5.30. Some of our students will be meeting in the courtyard to guide you over to St. Salvators Church. This will be guided by the university chaplain. Again, we'll then start and end the day at a ward law reception in our beautiful University Museum, just located in the scores. 
This will start at 6pm this evening, followed by a very traditional Scottish Cayley. So I do hope you're ready to dance and to enjoy the experience of St Andrews, of course. And lastly, if you need any assistance during the conference, please visit the reception desk located in Lower College Hall, and our team is there to help you. So thank you all again for being here today, and I do wish you well and good networking and future collaboration on behalf of Agrofon and the University of St Andrews. Thank you so much. to welcome you to the University of St Andrews on behalf of our principal, Professor Dame Sally Mapstone, who's sorry she cannot be here today. For those of you who don't know the University of St Andrews, we are, as you can see, a small university in a town on the windswept east coast of Scotland, but that's only part of the picture. We are in a wee town in Fife, but we're also international and outward-looking. We're one of the ancient Scottish universities, and while we respect tradition, we also embrace positive progress and innovation. For these reasons, I'm particularly glad to welcome to our university this international conference, Transnational Island Museologies, which is linked to the UK research and innovation funded project, Shared Island Stories Between Scotland and the Caribbean, Past, Present, Future, led by Professor Karen Brown at the School of Art History. This conference, like the project, is clearly an international and multidisciplinary affair. Although Shared Island Stories is a School of Art History-led research project, it works closely with colleagues across the university and with many international partners. The Transnational Island Museologies Conference has representation from 47 countries, either in person or virtually, and has an impressive range of speakers and workshops including ones focused on psychosocial healing through creative practice, eco-museums and community museums, collective memory, colonial afterlives, rethinking imperial collections, and many, many more. Keynote speakers are Hilda Flavia Nakabuye, an environmental youth activist, um, and Fridays for Future Uganda co-founder. Her inspiring work focuses on raising awareness and mobilizing young people towards climate action. Professor Colin McCarthy, Professor of Museum and Heritage Studies at Victoria University Wellington, New Zealand, an interdisciplinary humanities scholar who explores the intersection of history, theory and practice in public culture. I should also mention that the conference is held in collaboration with the International Committee of Museology, ICOFON, a committee of ICON, and I am delighted on behalf of the University to welcome the ICON board and delegates from around the world to St Andrews and to Scotland. We're proud to showcase the University's role as a global leader in museum and cultural heritage, working with our collaborative networks and international partners and friends. Indeed, the conference will host the 47th Annual Assembly of ICON on Friday. But back to the conference. It is striking how this Transnational Island Museologies Conference held in an ancient and traditional seat of learning, captures the best of old and new. The programme highlights a way of working that is inclusive, combining traditional university models of learning with expertise from beyond the academy. The sessions are so much about listening, about dialogue, about engaging with a wide variety of interlocutors, about not shying away from difficult topics. In short, it shows us how universities can and should engage with important issues in open and progressive ways. I hope that this conference will strengthen existing relationships and create some new ones that we will all benefit from. Finally, I would like to thank Professor Karen Brown, Jamie Brown, and Professor Laura Moretti of the School of Art History for hosting this event, and to all of you for participating. I wish you a challenging, exciting, and successful conference and an enjoyable visit to St. Andrews. Thank you. Um, some of you uh, will know that Emma Nardi is president of ICOM and she had hoped to be here, but of course, Marseille, the general meeting is taking place only next week and so it would have been just too much for her to travel to St. Andrews, much as she would have loved to. Um, and so Emma has kindly sent us a very short video to help open this conference as well. Over to Emma.
I'm very grateful to Professor Karen Brown, Chair of ICOM and Professor at St. Andrews University, for inviting me to say a few words just before the ICOM conference, a, an interesting theme which concerns shared island stories between Scotland and the Caribbean, past, present and future. And I think that this theme is very well related to the course about the award ICOM launch about sustainable practices in museums and that ICOFOM took uh, so that they can endorse uh, projects coming from museums. So this is another reason to be grateful. I know that you do a wonderful uh, research activity that is witnessed by the ICOFOM International Series that everybody can consult from the ICOM website. So it's a real patrimony that you give to all members and also to students in museology who want to, uh, to have an idea of what these studies imply. So I'm sure that this conference will be a great success and I wish you to have a good debate but also a good glass of wine at the end. Thank you. delighted to say that Fiona McKenzie, Gaelic singer, storyteller and traditional knowledge holder, um, has come along to join us today with, um, her, with her sister as well and she is going to get us involved in a participatory workshop around Gaelic singing and walking. So Fiona, without further ado, can I please bring you to the floor to lead uh, this, this part of the session. Thank you. as 
going round the table. The tweed is put on the table and the, the singers would sing and make work a little bit lighter. So that's what I'm going to, um, in a process which normally takes seven or eight hours, we're going to condense it into about 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to use a lot of help here. Uh, there are several processes in the stage of walking. It starts off with what's called a bowl, like, which is where the bowl means hitting. And so a tweed is hit on the table until it's the correct size. It has to be measured, and it's measured with your hands, so we will do that. But it has to be seven hand widths wide. Uh, my tweed is not wet, but normally it would have been wet. It would have been soaked in urine to make the fibres tighter and uh, to make it wind and watertight. I promise you I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless there's any volunteers. Uh, so we're going to measure it and then we're going to do what's called a pasquic. And a pasquic means folding. And so the tweed was folded and it was treated with care and treated with respect and deference because it's important. Then once it's been, it's been um, it's been folded, and that would traditionally be a slower song, let, people, let the singers get their breath back. Uh, I also should mention that there would normally be seven, eight, maybe nine ladies, and it was always the ladies who did the work, because it was such hard work that the men wouldn't do it. <laughs> but it's also interesting to note that when the songs left Scotland and went to the New World, it was the men who adopted the tradition, and they adopted it as a social tradition. Uh, it's typical. Yeah, they have the fun that we will do the work. So we're going to do the pass gig, the folding, and then we're going to sing a slightly slower song. We, collective we. Don't worry, don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to do anything that, that you can't do. And then we're going to finish off with a, a basic, which means clapping. And the song, the, the, the tweet is clapped on the table, and it's a sign signifying that it's the end of the work, and that it's time to have a wee dram, and a wee cup of tea and a wee scone and some cheese perhaps. So that song that I sang is the first one that we're going to do. So I'm going to ask for some volunteers now to come and join. And uh, I'll teach you, I'll teach you a very, very simple chorus and then we'll do the whole thing. So it's just a bit of participation. So don't be scared, you don't have to become any Gaelic. Um, even if you just sing la, but it's the whole thing. It's all about getting involved. Oh, fantastic. So in the here, quick. Uh, get with another couple of people, perhaps? Yeah, super. Excellent, fantastic. Oh, it's so good to see willing volunteers. Normally it's coercion or nothing. <laughs> fantastic, thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Jamie's been so helpful, you know, it's just been absolutely fantastic. It's been absolutely wonderful. Any questions I've had, he's been there to answer them all. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, okay. So, so you see us, you can sit down. We've got a, and two of us is the word that we use in Gaelic, which means a plenty of, lots of volunteers. Please get, get an extra train if you want to join in, the more the better. Right, so here is my tweet, and this is a traditional Gaelic tweet, uh, which was gifted to me. They're very, they're very scarce. And if you'll notice that it's been, it's, been, it's been sewn, so that it's a circle of tweet. And this is very important for it. So can you just separate it out so it's in a circle? That's it, Gleva. Same as she is. So what we do is the tweed, of course, always goes round the table um, clockwise, never anti-clockwise. That's bad luck. And uh, so we, the, you, you pick it up and you put your thumb underneath. And you hold it like this. I can only do it with one hand because I've got the other hand in the microphone. So that's, and we'll just practice it before I actually go over the, 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 the chorus for you. We'll just practice it because it's amazing actually how difficult it is for adults to do this, this coordination. Kids have no problem with it. Um, adults, yes, have a little bit more problem. So just follow my lead, okay? So you just, you lift it up and then you push it down 
you push it in into the middle a little bit and back out towards you and then you pass it on to the person on your left. That's it. And then in and back and on and pick and in and back and on <laughs> and pick and in and on and pass it on. And of course you've got to remember you've got to sing at the same time. <laughs> like, remember it's not a parachute, it does not need to come up here. <laughs> Keep it down close to the table, treat it with the respect it deserves. <laughs> right, so the vocables for the chorus of this song, and I should explain the song. The song is a song from the island of Skye, and it's a fairy song. And in it the singer is saying that they saw a milkmaid come to the shore. She was doing something that nobody can do and that was to harvest uh, shellfish at high tide. So obviously there was something a little bit strange about her. So she cut her hands and she cut her feet and she sucked salt water. Not quite sure what that's about, but anyway. That's what she was doing, so that's the, the premise of this little song. So the, co the chorus goes, Imeriv Etherim, can you say that? Imeriv Etherim, Imeriv Etheram. Everybody can join in. Imeriv etheram. Gleva. Very good. Next, and then, so you sing that. So it goes, Imeriv etheram. Imeriv etheram. Horo. Horo. Imeriv etheram. Horo. And then the next bit's a little bit more tricky. Hurivo. Hurivo, snahorin ehan, snahorin ehan. Then back to the beginning again. Imravetaram horo. Okay, oh, I've got it already. <laughs> right, well, just go for it, okay? <laughs> Please, all, everybody join in. Okay, so there's about six verses. So it's very short. It's very short. It's only one line verses and then you can sing the chorus. So okay, let's go for it and see what happens. And remember you've got to pass the tweed on. So in, yeah, three, let's set up the bull look. Keep it down to the table. Then imagine you've got the chorus now. Just hold on until we get started. <laughs> Slides and giggles and chat and uh, in between they would be, you know, telling all the stories and the gossip at the village, <laughs> passing on the tradition and the stories. So, right, we're well okay, we're, we've done the bowl, look, now we're going to measure it, which means, can we just spread it out a bit so that I can, um, I can see if it's the right size, and to this I'm going to count, I'm going to count in Gaelic. So let's hope it's it's seven hand width, width so we can all count. If you can count in Gaelic, then please do so. In, a ga, a three, a kehath, a koik, 
is she yes, a chef? Yes, it's just perfect. It's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. Right, so now who's got the bit that's sewn together? Um, it needs to be ripped. Just rip it apart. Rip, this, rip, rip, rip out the, yep, 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 that's it, so that we can do the pass gig. This is the pass gig and folding. Now, I need one end to do it from here. This is really difficult doing it with one hand. Oh, such was the work in the islands. Okay, right, so here we go. Right, it needs to be out now. What you do is you, you treat it with a deference and you smooth all the creases out and you say, oh, this is fantastic. We're going to have some money coming to the village. We'll get this all. This is amazing. So now we're going to fold it all up and I'm going to sing a pass gig. Right, I'm just going to go for it, and if you can pick up the vocables, the vocables and the, the words in the middle that don't have any meaning, so it's really only hook o is basically what you have to sing. So you'll pick it up, you'll pick. And this is a this is a um, a very old song, many versions, and this is the story of the jealous sister, the jealous sister on the shore with her uh, Shula. It's okay, I'm not meaning you. Okay? Um, she's the, the one sister is jealous of the other because the other sister has got the the husband that she wanted. So she waits till her sister has fallen asleep and she pleats her hair into the seaweed so that she, uh, she drowns. So this is the song, a really cheery song, sorry. <laughs> this is the song of the dying mother. She's singing to her baby, saying it will not be me that suckles you tonight. So, okay, right, go for it. Right, okay, so. Basic. In the bas this is your bas, your palm of your hand. So this is like putting the palms of your hand on the tweet, and this is the time for celebration. So this is like a clapping song. It doesn't have any practical um, need. It doesn't it's not needed for anything particular. It's just a signifying that this is the end of the work, and we're all looking forward to a weekly afterwards. So um, it's generally a little bit faster. Than, than the other, um, than the certainly than the pass gig that has gone before it. So you clap it with your both hands. I can only do it with one on the microphone. Um, uh, that you can clap the table if you can't reach the tweet, but if you can reach the tweet, you can actually clap clap it on it and use both your your hands. So this is. Um, I'm just going to use a little Porsche de Beal, um, or a piece of mouth music to do this. Um, uh, lots of songs could be adapted for it, but this is just an example of a um, uh, first appeal, which I'm sure some of you will know. So. Brought the 
she tan alam, she broke a mum soo. Brom lam, tan alam, broke a mum soo. Brom lam, tan alam, broke a mum soo. Brom lam, tan alam, broke a mum soo. Brom lam, she tan alam, she broke a mum soo. Brom tan alam, tan alam, broke a mum soo. Brom tan alam, tan alam, tan alam, broke a mum soo. Brom tan alam, tan alam, tan alam, broke a mum soo. Brom lam, she tan alam, she broke a mum soo. Well, I think that must be the speediest walk, walk is the word for um, a walking that I've ever done in my life, but more in time, thank you very much to my wonderful team of singers and walkers here, and uh, and for you for joining in. That was that was a lovely way to, well, I hope that you think it was a lovely way to start the day, and if um, Ed has any questions about walking, uh, um, catch me later, I'll be around all week, so more in time, yay, hula, thank you very much. much Fiona for setting the tone <laughs> for the rest of this conference and um, for engaging us all in that fun event, a traditional event. Really great. <coughs> um, I'm glad I don't have a sister that will mess with me. <laughs> so um, here we are, We've, we're through the, the formal part of, of the meetings and now we can get, um, get on with our parallel sessions. So at this point, um, I'm going to hand over to Jamie, who will explain where to go um, for the next part, but essentially most of the events are going to take place here, so you won't get lost. It's just here and across, across the area, and everything will be fine. So thank you so much, all of the um, speakers this morning, and especially Fiona. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. So now we come to the end of the opening ceremony. I hope you enjoyed the performance. And again, Fiona, thank you so much on behalf of Anchorhome and the University of St Andrews. It was a pleasure to have you here today. And now we move on to our parallel sessions. But first, I would just like to invite everyone to grab a very last minute tea or coffee, because we still have 10 minutes, so that would be great. And I'd like to invite all of us to go to the relevant um, three parallel sessions. The first one is Poetics and Politics in School 1. Our student volunteers will be outside the building waving and welcoming you into the building. But essentially, you just turn right out of the building, sorry, turn left out of the building, and the, the schools and halls are just on your left. So it's just a very short walk to the other side of the building, and our lecture halls are School 1 for Poetics and Politics, School 2 for the role of eco museums and community museums, and School 3 for intangible knowledge transmission. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your day. Of course, our reception will be open if you have any queries and please do grab that last minute to your coffee. Thank you very much. Thank you.